Hi guys, welcome back to What to Watch. I'm Nigel Oxley, and today I've got a really special guest with me today. This is Mr. Popping Crowns from Instagram. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, Nigel. Thanks for having me here. No, do you know what? It's a great pleasure to have you on. Um, this is the first of a new series where we're going to be getting to know the Watch fam. Um, the idea behind this just being a very cool, nice, relaxed chat between two watch enthusiasts. Um, we get to see a lot of people, I guess, on Facebook forums and on Instagram who are watch collectors just like us. Um, but I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to get to know and do a little bit of a deeper dive about some of the, I guess, um, some of the faces or pictures we see behind behind those accounts. Um, and what a I can't think of a better place to start than with yourself. We've been kind of chatting and emailing back and forth for a while now. Um, and I thought you sound like a really interesting guy, um, and I want to get to know you a little bit better as a as a watch collector and as a person. Um, so you are popping crowns, but I am pretty sure that your mother didn't christen you as that. So introduce yourself <laughs> for your real name if you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name's Chris Ansulis, and uh, yeah, I've been. Been only popping crowns now for uh, like six months or so. Yeah, maybe. I think you, you started probably pretty much on Instagram pretty much the same as me. Um, yeah. We probably started around about the same time. So, yeah, I, I, like I say, I see you as, as popping crowns all the time. So whenever <laughs> whenever I'm talking about you, I always I always say popping crowns. But it's nice to put a, a Chris in front of the popping crowns. <laughs> that, that is great. I, yeah. I mean, you know, I after seeing your videos for so much, I like I just call you Nigel because I get, I get used to that intro. So. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So just set the scene for us. Where um where are you? Where do we find you? Um, so currently, um, I'm living in Chesapeake, Virginia. Okay. Um, and I I'm f grew from New York City, moved to Chesapeake, uh, Virginia when I was young. When, back to new york and now back here so, so for, for those of us on the other side of the pond that probably don't know our american geography very well uh, virginia is east coast um between florida and new york yeah kind of right smack dab in the middle cool. between florida and new york yeah. okay well that, that kind of helps me um so from new york originally what what do you miss about new york what when you go back what's the what's the first thing you do and i think i know the answer to this already <laughs> Because it's what I would be doing. <laughs> is, is it going to the watch boutiques? No, 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 we're not talking watches yet. We'll get into no, watches soon. Watches no, if it was me, I'd be going straight for some pizza somewhere. Yes. That's what I would, uh, would miss. Yeah, that that is the thing that I miss about New York a lot. Um, any, any type of food that you're craving, there's usually a really great restaurant for it somewhere yeah um uh, so yeah i definitely miss food definitely miss pizza virginia can't do pizza like new york but you know i'll tell you what even more than pizza um bagels um, okay <laughs> new york can do bagels like no one else and never had a good one here in virginia so I like it. Always miss it new york. so what's what's the day job what do you do what do you do nine to five monday to friday what's what's the what keeps the bills paid? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I work in graduate admissions uh, for a university here. And uh, it's nice. I work remotely now. So the, I work for a university up in Boston. And I, I get to talk to students all day long. Um, I've been, I, I before that, I had been a professor for quite a few times for creative writing, um, fiction, poetry, and I moved over to the staff side of things. Okay. So that yeah, from just from seeing your Instagram and following you, you can quite clearly see that the the writing side of it is is <laughs> and and obviously don't take this the wrong way is probably more important to you than the photography side of it, uh, because when I see your posts on Instagram, you know it's there's there's a there's a picture that tells a story, but then I would say with you more than most others. There's always more context to that with the with the actual text that's that's accompanying the picture. So uh, so I guess writing is 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 your hobby outside. You know it, that's 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 what comes across. Right, I'm one of those weirdos on Instagram that is hoping you're going to read the caption. No, we do. Some of us do. 
<laughs> it's funny. There's there's quite a few guys that when they write big things, they put like um, I saw one the other day where a guy he started putting random emojis right at the bottom of his of his text, and he said, if you've got this far and you're commenting, stick this emoji in there so he can tell who's actually read it, which I thought was actually quite clever. <laughs> I don't think I would be that judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But that's a good idea. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so that's that's a little bit about you outside watches. Let's get a little bit of a deeper diver into you as a as a sort of a watch collector, and then after we've done that, let's move on to some actual physical watches. Oh, actually, there's something I have totally forgotten, which is a wristwatch check. Let's have a look, see what you're actually wearing today. Oh man, uh, yeah, because you got some of my favorites here next to me. I got. Uh, I mean, this is also a favorite, but this is uh, the Lunar Pilot. The, Very cool. Fiftieth uh, anniversary. Uh, lunar pilot so yeah very cool this was actually a, a christmas gift from my family so. oh nice very <laughs> yeah. nice yeah really well special to me. it is very special it's joy it's very it's a cool watch that i reviewed it um a couple of months ago now i had the uh, the non-date polished version of it absolutely love it um yeah just too big for my wrist um so it has actually gone out of the collection now i mean i bought it with every intention and i put it on for the first time and i was like actually it's not too big for my wrist. This is fine. It looks okay. Um, but do you know what? It, it, in reality, I was trying to convince myself, I guess, like I think a lot of people have done with that watch because um, it is such a cool piece. Um, but in reality, it is just, unfortunately, it's just too big for me. And my it, little... it, it is far and away the largest watch in my collection. Yeah. <laughs> have, you tried, have you tried on the, the new smaller one? I haven't. I, I really want to. Yeah. I, I love that uh, the white and blue yeah. that they came I guess they're calling it the Snoopy version. The Snoopy of, version, yeah. Well, it's very <laughs> clever. You know, the, the whole marketing behind the, the Lunar Pilot, piggybacking, I guess, off the back of the Moon Swatch is, is very good and very clever. And I think it, on its own, it's a great watch. Um, yeah. But then when they start doing things like the Snoopy version, you just think to yourself, Mm. But I get it. I mean, listen. Even even Amiga have done the same thing with the with the Moon Swatch. So I mean, if they can do it, why can't everybody else do it, right? Right. You know, they, they, at least the Lunar Pilot has actually been on the Moon, unlike the Moon Swatch, which hasn't. Um, yeah, so I'm I, wearing I, today. Sorry to yes. interrupt. I'm actually wearing the uh, Tudor GMT, um, and there's a, the reason for that. I got up this morning and I was like, I'm doing a Zoom call today with a guy in another time zone so I can actually set the GMT function to your time zone today. So it's the first time I've actually used this for its actual purpose rather than just, I guess, looking nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's why I've got my GMT on today. I'm, a, I'm actually kind of honored to be the reason yeah. for you to have used the GMT. I've got my GMT function set to your local time, which I think is quite cool. So... As a collector, for you, where where did the start? How did you get into watches in the first place? Without specifically talking about any specific watches, because obviously we'll come on to that in right. section three. Um, yeah, I, I guess there are just like two phases. Um, I've always, ever since I was a kid, I I was into watches. Um, just something about them kind of calmed me being able to to keep time control time and you know when i was the last generation that ha didn't have a cell phone yeah. When you were yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um so having a watch was like important when your mom tells you like five more minutes and you're like <laughs> come on yeah, yeah yeah but uh so yeah i think from when i was little i got into watches um i liked having a little accessory on my wrist but uh when i got older um you know, my, my brother gifted me my, my first uh, mechanical uh, automatic watch. Um, and from then on, I, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is a slippery really, slope. This is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of my journey of how I got into it. Okay, so when you're looking at a specific watch now or something that might catch your eye, I guess, it's newness going into the collection, what, what is it that, that gets you about a specific watch? Are you a, are you a specs guy? Is it the, the history? Is it the way it looks? Is it an engineering combination of a lot? You know, you tell me. Um, yeah, can I, can I say all of the above? Yeah, 100%. Um, it's the yeah, same for all of us, I think. Yeah. I, I, 
I think it really just depends on the watch. Um, if the strength of the watch comes from the history and story, like that, that can get me if it's a particular thing. Um, uh, but I, I'd say more often than not, it's it is what it looks like. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I. I'm a colorful person, so... Listen, I, I wasn't going to mention this, but um, <laughs> anybody that does follow you on Instagram will have seen the shots of you uh, holding your watch in sort of this with always watch, T-shirt, and cap. Very, very matchy-matchy. And, it, it, you know, always with a big smile as well, I will say. So I'm yeah. guessing the, the, the colour and the aesthetic for you is quite important. Yeah, the the color the color goes along. I don't like to have too many watches that have the same color dial. Um, it, if someone comes out with something new that I like, um, you know, I've I've been looking at purple a lot recently. Okay, like I need, need a purple. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'd say that's something quite aesthetic. Black Panther. Yes, a little bit Black Panther, uh, but uh, not. I'm I'm nowhere near as cool. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I'd say that comes first, but then it's, you know, just like every every other uh, watch nerd I'm into, I want to know about the movement, I want to know, you know, I have my, my druthers about spending too much money for, like, an NH35. Yeah, yeah. Because I've got them in, like, two watches now. Like, I don't need another, and I'm not spending, like, 600 bucks on this movement. Yeah. Uh, so, and so is yeah. that is that something that, is there something that within the specs, then, that would put you off? So, say, for instance, is... I don't know, do you have a, everything has got to be sapphire or everything has got to be automatic or is there, is there a, a real diverseness to the, to the collection or is it about value? Um, there, it's, a little, it's a, little bit of, a little bit of both. I, I don't have too many watches above like the $1,000 mark. I mean, I, I, have, I have a couple, but it, it, so it's, um, so there is a lot of value uh, in the collection, but... Um, yeah, I, I'd say that there isn't really a spec that puts me off unless uh, it doesn't work yeah. with the like. Um, uh, you know, I'm not a big uh, like loom is not a real important thing to me. Like when something has it, I'm like great. Uh, like you know, you you posted that shot of the Ferrer. Recent Ferrer does loom like so awesome. cool. <laughs> um, but so when they do it and they do it well, I'm like, oh, cool. But it doesn't have to have it. Uh, I'd say the one thing that puts me off of watches is uh, I and I have one watch that has it, and it's the only thing I hate about it. I hate the 4:30 date window. Like it, it, it just aggravates me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a, a, a watch by um, an English micro brand called Forzo, um, and it's a it's a chronograph. It's, they're actually I don't know how big of a, a company they are when it comes to watches. They've got a few brands. They've got Gakota, uh, Forzo, and another one that I can't remember off the top of my head. But they originally started off as a strap company, Watch Gecko, over here in the yeah. UK. They're pretty big, um, and that is beautiful chronograph. I mean, it's um, Mecha Quartz. It's got an amazing blue sandblasted dial with like white chapter rings, um, and it's awesome. Uh, the one thing that every time I look at it is that <laughs> date window in that position, and I just think, just leave it off. Just you, yeah. nobody buys a chronograph to see what the date is. If it's that cluttered already, you know, with, with a three uh, position chronograph, just just get rid of the date. I, oh yeah, that's one of the reasons why I love this this Lunar Pilot so yeah. much because you know so many of them have that four thirty date window, and I'm like, mm, yeah, no. not for me. <laughs> no. Cool. Okay. So as far as the collection as a whole is concerned. Is there a theme to it? I mean, I know some guys collect specific brands and they like have a collection of 20 Zodiacs, for instance, or um, they just collect dive watches or, you know, is there a theme to yours or is it, you know what, I like that, I can justify it, I'm going to get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is more that. It is more, uh, I like that, I'm going to get it. Like, like I said, going going for the different colors, the aesthetic that I feel like is kind of what I collect. I, I tried, I think at the beginning of me collecting, I, I was, I wanted to go with a sci-fi theme. Like I wanted to get watches from, from sci-fi movies. And then I realized there are so many other watches that I like that, <laughs> you, you know, like uh, one of the watches that I really want to get is I love that uh, Seiko from Aliens, Ripley's with the, the push buttons on the side. 
I want it because of how much I love the movie. those movies. Um, but at the same time, I see it and I'm like, how often am I going to wear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of got to ju- got to justify the spend and the space in the collection for risk time, I guess. It's whether it just be an object that I want to put in a collection as opposed to something that's actually going to get worn. Yeah, I think that's something we all have to kind of look at every now and then. Um, okay. And then when, so when you're buying a watch, you know, are you a uh, see something and just go for it? Or are you uh, do you research and do like painstaking watch videos and, you know, how, how, how do you go from that first initial seeing something to then actually parting with the cash? What's the process? Um, I think, I think the, the process is the, the fun part, uh, figuring, <clears throat> figuring out what you want, doing the research to make sure it's right, trying it on, watching the videos. I mean, I, I think one of the, the first conversations we ever had was I, I was commenting on like, Oh, I, I watched your videos and I, I liked that you were honest. <laughs> like you said what you thought was crap on all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably I think if I remember I think I know which one that was yeah <laughs> I think I know too yeah <laughs> it's, to be honest it's probably one of the only videos that I've done where and apologies to Timex um, because the, the new version that they have done of that particular watch is outstanding um, but the, 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 it's just, the you know it looks great um, but then right. when you actually handle it, it it's just riddled with flaws unfortunately and, and you know I'm not I'm not sponsored by anybody. Nobody sends me free stuff. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm an independent guy. And I just, I think, you know, I don't have a lot of subscribers. I don't have thousands of views. I mean, some of the videos do okay, particularly the ones with the Judas. It seems to just absolutely fly. Um, well, you know, now you got my face, so it's going to go right away. <laughs> Listen, we'll see. We'll see. You know, if nobody watches this, this was fun to make already, let alone if anybody watches it or not. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I suppose I've got, got to be honest because if, if somebody's watched, I, you know, even if two people watch that video and I said this watch looks fantastic, it's great, it does this, it does that, it does the other, and they go out and buy it and go, uh, this is actually, you know, when you, you look at it, it's a piece of crap. Uh, mm-hmm. Pardon my French. Um, I don't want to be responsible for that. You know, I'm not saying I'm influential in any way whatsoever, but if anybody has looked at one of my videos for a review and seen, seen me be what you know think what is me being honest about a watch and then unfortunately it's it doesn't turn out to be that way but listen they sold a hell of a lot of units to those watches so what's my opinion of course and and actually you know to to confess the reason i watched that video first is that was my first automatic watch um i have the uh the version with uh snoopy on it the mass marvel with the mask on yeah um because uh i I write comic books and stuff and my brother thought like oh he would as a first mechanical watch like this would be real cool well I, listen i bought it for my for my stepson as his first watch that's how i have it um because he'd always said to me i want a batman i want a batman i want a batman and uh, i wasn't spending twenty thousand dollars on a batman for him so i bought him that and and then i thought this would be a great review on the channel because i know how well they they did um yeah yeah it didn't turn out that way but yeah uh, Oh yeah, the the bracelet on that watch broke in the first month. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have not a new bracelet now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, and then lastly, something I just want to broach before we get into <clears throat> talking specific watches, which is obviously why we're here. Um, what do your friends and family think about your watch collecting? Is it something they support? Do they think you're bonkers? You know, get into it. Uh- Oh, they think I'm insane. <laughs> like, uh, with with the exception of of my brother, who is also into it, um, ev- everyone else thinks I'm nuts. Um, and uh, yeah, I have I have a few very supportive friends who will like ask me questions, bracing themselves for the TED talk that I'm going to launch into <laughs> when I answer. <laughs> So yeah, I have I have some amazing supportive friends, but I but everyone I think in general um, is 
just like, yeah, you, when you get into something, you go hard. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? I think, I think that's why, you know, YouTube, Facebook groups, obviously not, not, not Facebook, but Facebook watch groups um, and, and Instagram is, is a great outlet for us because it's a place where we can, I guess, feel safe talking about the, the things that we like to talk about where, yeah. you know, everybody else thinks we're just like, you know, if, if I posted the stuff on my personal Facebook that I post on my Instagram, you know, I could only imagine what kind of results that I would be getting back. Um, so, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So what I've asked uh, Chris to do before we started today is just to go through, um, pick out six specific watches in answer to six specific questions or seven questions, uh, sorry, six questions. Yeah. Um, just to give a little bit of an insight into specific models that he's got within the collection. Um, and it's if, if this video does well, and if we do more of these uh, chats with other watch collectors, then I will use the exact same six questions just to kind of give some kind of, I guess, format to the chat. Um, so question number one, Chris, which is the uh, oldest watch in the collection or the watch that kind of started it all, got it all going? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got it right here. Um, it's, sorry, I got to take the strap off of the pillow. Uh, this this guy does not get wear, worn 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 <laughs> this guy does not get worn very much but it's the uh, 3D Arts <laughs> holographic Darth Vader watch. Now that is cool. <laughs> um, so this yeah, goes back to the whole starting off the collection with the sci-fi thing, right? Uh, right. Although I was not intentionally doing that when I was a child. Um, this is uh, this is from 1994, so I was. Seven. Okay. <laughs> See, I wasn't going to ask you how old you were because I thought that would be rude. You've just done that yourself. Anybody that can do maths can work that out now. <laughs> Did it myself. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think this was my first one. I think a Power Rangers watch was my first one. Very cool. Uh, but this is the oldest that I still have, and um, yeah, I actually I found it this summer. Uh, I dug it back up this summer and, and it was obviously the battery was dead. I stuck a new battery in. It's got to be like 33 millimeters across. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I wear it every now and then. So what, what, what is it? Is it, a, is it a, a, a modified watch or is it a one that they sold as part of the Star Wars? Um... Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think it was a watch that I saw in a toy store. Oh, cool. Um, it was a watch I saw in a toy store, and, you know, I was, um, <clears throat> I've been into Star Wars ever since I was a little kid, um, huge Star Wars nerd, uh, and, you know, when you're, when you're six years old and Darth Vader walks across the screen for the first time, you're like, I don't know what that is, but that's the coolest thing ever, um, and then to, to wear him <laughs> yeah, on, on your wrist, wrist. In, in hologram <laughs> form. In hologram form, so sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. Um, yeah, that was just the coolest thing for uh, for six or seven year old Chris. But you know what? Awesome that you still got that. Because I, I mean, I didn't have many watches when I was growing up. I wasn't really a watch guy. Um, I didn't really get into collecting watches till quite considerably later. Um, so everything, anything that I would have worn on my wrist at that time would have been very much throw away and probably was thrown away. Um, so. <clears throat> Very cool that you still got that from so many years ago. That is oh, awesome. Oh yeah, I, I was so I was so excited when I found it. And you know, uh, adult Chris now likes the you know Oris came out with the Aquas a couple years ago. That was like the Darth Vader, yeah, uh, Stormtrooper Aquas line. <clears throat> I want that so bad. <laughs> the the grown-up Chris wants that. Put it on your list. It's just, listen, it's just a, a more expensive version of ex for the same reasons of exactly what you've got there. Right, it's the same watch, just... Uh, a big boy version. Big, the, the big boy, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. What in the collection, so number two, let's move on. Number two is probably got the most sentimental value. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so... So this is um, 
but hold on. See, I you inspired me to to keep a notebook now of all because you had asked for me to know some specs and stuff. So I've started now writing down oh, all nice. of my watches. With Listen, specs. I'm I'm surrounded in bits of paper today and <laughs> what have you. I'm exactly the same. So uh sentimental value. Um this is the Casio W ninety six H uh one B V. Uh all the I'm not a big reference number guy. No, so. me neither. You know, I, I can <laughs> spout probably a couple of Rolex reference numbers, but other than that, I'm not a reference number guy. So it's it's this it's this guy right here. I'm looking at it. You sent me the link of it here. Yeah. There's um, it's very cool. So, What's uh, the story yeah. behind that? So yeah, it was uh, it was my grandfather's watch. Nice. Um, I know a, a lot of people have those stories of their grandfather leaving them Patex or Rolex or yeah, that'd be um, nice. And uh, no one, no one left this to me. Uh, I was very close with my grandfather. No, no one left it. But uh, it has an alarm that goes off at two p.m. every day. Um, okay. And my my grandma did not know how to shut it off. <laughs> and, um, I still I haven't shut it off. I let it go off, but it. Uh, she's like, "Do you want this?" It annoys me. <laughs> um, it was your grandfather's, and you know my my grandfather was that guy who uh, he liked nice things. He was more into cars, but um, <clears throat> he <laughs> he would go buy a watch from like Walmart or Target for like ten fifteen dollars. And that was his watch. And when it ran out of battery, I don't know that he just didn't want to go through the hassle of changing the battery or didn't know that he could, but he would just chuck the watch and buy a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, but this was, this was the watch he had for some years before, uh, up until he passed away. And, um, so cool story. I'm not 100% sure uh, that it's true, but I'm like 90% sure that it is. Let's just uh, go with it. Whatever it is, it's true. I wanted to know why it went off at 2 p.m. every day. And I asked my grandmother, <laughs> do you know why? Did he take like pills at 2 p.m.? Like, was, was that like a thing? And she's like, no. Um, <laughs> so there was one day I was, I was sitting down in, in the living room with my grandma and, you know, she watches her soaps during the day, like yeah. days, of our, days of our lives. Got, got to get that. See, we don't get there. days of our lives over here. The only reason we know what days of our lives is, is because Joey from friends was in it. Friends. Other than that, we don't know what days of our lives is, but that, we that have is, our own versions of it. I'm sure. That is the extent of me being a fan of days of our lives yeah. is following Dr. Drake Ramore. But, uh, uh, no. So, my, my grandma watched Days of Our Lives every day, and um, it ends at 2. <laughs> my grandfather hated it. So, That's amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, I think he set this to know when he could go in the living room. That's brilliant. And, and, um, but yeah, he was, he was a funny guy, into cartoons a lot. Uh, definitely is probably the person that got me into cartoons and animation. But uh, I... This watch is so sentimental to me because every day at two, he makes me laugh and he's been gone for three years. So, <laughs> you know what? Firstly, having the watch from your grandfather is, is an amazing way to kind of connect with him. But, but secondly, and having it go off every day at a specific time for a funny reason that will remind you of that nice memory of your grandfather every day, I think is probably one of the coolest watch stories I've probably ever heard. So when, b before I before I tear just... up, let's move yeah. on. <laughs> um, which watch in the collection gets the most time on the wrist? What do you wear the most? Um, so the most because you have two questions on here that I might have had the same answer for. Okay, I separated them. So uh, I would say probably the most time is my Hamilton Murph. Nice. Um, so I've currently got that on the bracelet um, right now, which I was so excited to find out that they made a bracelet that fits it because, as you might know, they don't sell it on a bracelet. No. Um, and I love I love the strap that it came on. But, uh, yeah, it gets the most wrist time because, again, going back to colors, 
It's my watch that looks good on every strap. I have so many straps for it. Um, so yeah, it, it, it gets the most wrist time. I, I think the dial on it is beautiful. It's, uh, you know, when I want it to look classic and classy, I'll put it on the leather. Um, you know, when I want it to look sporty, got it on the bracelet. And then if I'm wearing a weird color, it can go <laughs> with it. It, yeah. it can it can go with it whether I leave it on the bracelet or if I put it on a purple strap or a flower strap or uh, whatever. So it's um, super versatile. It's it's my versatile watch that I wear with anything. No, I had a thirty eight uh, automatic uh, khaki field Hamilton. Um, and I it was one that I bought during the beginning of lockdown. Um, because I, my collection at the time was full of, um, I guess, bracelet watches, um, and I was working a lot on my desk, on what have you, and all, all of, every day I was catching my bracelet on the corner of the desk and on the laptop and what have you, and I thought, I need to get something that I can just chuck on a NATO and wear around the house, because um, I, I, I work away from home a lot, so I'm always out and about. I visit customers all over the country. I'm always out on the road. So having going from that to lockdown being in the house 24 7 i you know I, I didn't really have a watch in the collection that i thought would still be kind of cool to have on the wrist but and then i ended up selling it to fund something else and every couple of days i look in the watch box and i'm like i need that khaki field back that's a cool watch and i regret that's the one i regret selling <clears throat> yeah Ham <clears throat> hamilton makes a really good watch and you know, I feel like we all have those watches that we recommend to first time, yeah. you know, first time folks who want to step up uh, with a nice watch. Uh, you, you just can't go wrong with with a Hamilton, with a khaki field, with Murph, with um, what they have that awesome chrono that I want. So the, the, the new, have you seen the new? The, oh, the Intramatic's oh, cool, but oh, they've done the a new chronograph, I, which looks amazing. I have seen the amazing. new ones are so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looks um, amazing. But, See, yeah, they're great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I'm not going to go and try one on because the last thing I read right now is another new watch. But who, listen, who knows? Who knows? Um, the newest watch, so your latest purchase, the last one you bought. Right, I've been a, <clears throat> I've been a good, a good guy, and uh, it's been a little while. Good. By a little, by a little while, I mean like. November, October. <laughs> Listen, that's five months. <coughs> that's, yeah, no, it's a while. Are you getting, um, are you getting withdrawal? Are you getting a bit shaky? So uh, I know you'll be able to connect with me on this, um, but I went to a wind-up watch fair in New York, and uh, I got to see all these cool watches by these great independent and micro brands and... Uh, I met the guys from Ferrer there, so I got the uh, Ferrer Cali Verde. Um, I got to try it on there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's I a, that's a that's a great thing that those guys do because obviously, I mean, with them being um, in my last video when I um, reviewed the Resolute, I, I went through the reasons why I was confident enough to buy that watch without ever having actually seen it. Um, but I mean, that's laziness on my part, I guess, because three hours down the road, they do have a showroom. Um, but that's the only showroom they've got in the world. So I guess for, for someone like you on the other side of the pond, having them come to you is a great opportunity for you to look, see, touch, feel, stick it on well, your for, wrist. For sure. I think that that must be the hardest part for, for any of these brands is, <clears throat> you know, it's how do we get customers to to buy these without ever holding them yeah. and um for me it's just really hard to make like I, I i need to know especially when you know they're you're getting to that thousand dollar thousand pound price point and that's not that's not cheap that's not hyper we know how expensive this hobby can get yeah but it's it's a consider at that price it's a considered purchase and to make right. a considered purchase you need to have as much info uh, you know as you can and and if the info is well, what's it going to look like on my wrist that's important right and, and and they were one of the so many of the brands there were great but every one of their watches was impressive um, every one of their watches that I put hands on was great. And for some reason, 
this is the one that just stuck out to me. I'm like, I don't have green. Uh, yeah. This is really cool. Uh, so yeah, I have it. I have, I got the green strap with it and, uh, I ordered their, um, their mesh, their mesh, uh, strap, uh, bracelet to go on it as well. So it's, um, the, uh, to be yeah. honest, it's not a brand that I know massive amount about, you know, the, the, the two English brands that, that I kind of really yeah. like are, um, Ferrer and Christopher Ward. Um, right. now Christopher Ward, I've had my eye on a number of their models for a few years and always thought if I went micro brand British, I would end up going for Christopher Ward first. Um, right. And then, listen, as as we do, an advert popped up a couple of weeks ago for the new 36mm three-hander from Ferrer, and I was like, that's what's missing from my collection. I don't have a small, change the strap up, uh, colourful uh, three-hander in the collection, and that would fit into a, a gap that I have, and I was like, that looks really cool. So, again, you start right. down the rabbit hole, you do the research, and... It ended up here, and I, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I think the quality of it is fantastic, but... Oh, yeah. I mean, if you if you weigh up... that, I guess that's the, what they've got to weigh up. You know, you've got two options yeah. if you're setting up a brand. You go down the authorised dealer route, or you go down the, the straight direct-to-consumer route. And the problem with the direct-to-consumer route is exactly what you just said. You don't get to see the watches very often or the opportunity to get them. But then if you go down the AD route, then, yes... Uh, everyone can put their hands on your watches, but it doubles the price. By the time you know we we get them in our hands, my thousand pound or whatever it was fairer would have been a two thousand three hundred pound fairer. Which oh, f- for sure, and and I would definitely I, I would put their their quality up at the level of like Boris yeah. and maybe inching towards Tudor. Hundred percent. At at how nice they at how just really solid and how much care they put into it. No, it's a it's a it's a cool pick, and um, it's, I I got invited to go down to a a, a watch fair um, about a month ago. Um, there's one down here in Birmingham, um, and um, I politely declined to go because I knew exactly what would happen. I would come back <laughs> a couple of thousand pound lighter and uh, and, a, and a new watch on my wrist. So I uh, yeah try try. I'm, I'm like you, trying to be good at the moment, but. Um, I, listen, I just last week just got a new watch, and we're off out watch shopping this afternoon, me and the wife. So there's only so a level of of good that you can be. Right, I'm due for a breakdown soon too. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so imagine the world where everything goes wrong for you financially, and you have to start selling up, and the watches have all got to go, and you can only keep one. Which one are you keeping? <laughs> Uh, that, that is a very easy answer for me. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, the Black Bay 58 bronze. This is amazing. Um, that's very cool. This is my, and this is, this is the watch that, uh, that I said, I, I had the same watch for two answers where you said, uh, you know, which is the one you wear the, I might wear this more than the Murph. Okay. Um, even though this obviously doesn't go with everything, uh, I think I would. I think I would make that go with everything. That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. Um, what made you go for the bronze rather than the blue or the black? Sure, uh, I got to be different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I. Uh, so, I. I think I've recently personally gotten a lot of followers because of this watch, and it's. Um, I you know as. You might know I, I wrote an article for Time and Tide uh, about this, and um, published author everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I never thought I'd be published for um, writing about watches, but that's a cool new experience. For yeah, me. yeah. Um, and so it's uh, it was one of those things where I I was in New York visiting friends. I went to the Tudor boutique, and uh, I knew about this watch. They didn't have it there. They had like a weird display where I think they had a fake version of the watch head okay. mounted on a piece of plastic and it, it had the bracelet on it, but you couldn't try it on. And, um, I said, I really like that. Do you have it? And they're like, eh, no, <laughs> um, cause it was when it first came out. And, uh, so, uh, 
So yeah, they had me. Uh, they were great. If you got, if you ever get the chance to go to the Tudor Boutique in Manhattan, it's really cool. Uh, they have a, a full bar. There. They have a full like coffee bar and a full you know alcohol bar. And um, this guy was being real nice, getting me drinks and um, sitting down and letting me try on everything. He's like, "Oh, you like that? How about you try on the uh, the regular black bay bronze?" And I'm like, "Eh." Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice, but it's not me. I liked the bracelet. The yeah. bracelet's what I liked. Um, so yeah, I tried on the. My brother has the uh, the black and gilt Black Bay Fifty Eight. I liked that a lot. Um, but I just I have to be different. I love the Arabic numerals. Um, I love that it's bronze. I know a lot of people have their their concerns about bronze. How, that that was going to be my next question. How is it? How is it patina in? Is it is it is it showing any signs of patina or? Oh yeah, man! It is a dark. Brown. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a very even dark brown. Um, I I love the patina. When it came, it almost looked gold. Yeah. Like it it almost looked like it was a gold watch and. It, it, I'd say after six or seven months, it started really getting dark, and it 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 turns so much slower than most bronze watches do. Um, but it it's so even. I don't know what they do with their alloy that makes it do that. But it's it's so nice. It doesn't have any of the weird green specks into it. It's just a dark, a nice brown. even patina. Nice even patina, and. Um, uh, yeah, I lo- it does leave your wrist green every now and then. Okay. If you sweat a lot in it, uh, it does leave the wrist green, so you got to be cool with that. Uh, you got to be cool with um, if you don't wear it for a day and you sweat in it and you let it sit, the, the bracelet links will like stick. So you gotta you gotta do that with them. But uh, but do you know what that 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 gives that watch so much individual personality. The, oh, the fact does. that it's got those inherent problems or whatever you want to call it, characteristics rather than problems, I guess. Yes. Um, but So, yeah, how, how long between you going into the boutique and getting it was the... I, I think it was five months. Five okay. Or six, I, I think. Um, I, 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 I got the exact time down in the article because I went, I, I went and found the receipt. <laughs> but, um, so... Uh, but yeah, I think it was about five or six months, and I, you know, I'm I. It is far and away my uh, what I personally think is my nicest watch, and it is. Uh, I put my name down, never thinking that I was going to buy it. Yeah. The, the the guy's like, oh well, if you really like, after me spending an hour in the store, he's trying like, every everything on, else on, everything else on, and me being like, nah. <laughs> and not that I had an intention of buying any of them, but uh, he was like, well, you know, if you really do like that watch, do you want to put your name down on the list? And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sure, why not? Uh, and yeah, they called me a few months later, and uh, the story story goes, and uh, you know, all of this is in that article, but the story goes that I, uh, it was a week after I was diagnosed with uh, ADHD, and uh, just kind of getting a grip uh, on my own mental health, getting a control of that. And I'm not, uh, it is hard to get me to spend a lot of money on myself. So I, I got the call for that. I was sitting next to my brother having a beer at a brewery and he's like, who, who was that? And I'm like, Tudor, they asked me if I wanted the, the bronze. And he's like, you going to get it? And I said, I, I think so. Should I call them back? And he was like, <laughs> Yes, like, yes, you he's should. Like, yeah, he, he's like, Yeah, treat yourself to it. And, uh, yeah, so here I am with yeah. it. Yeah, favorite, no, cool. favorite watch. It's cool. Down. It's a cool story behind that one. And um, <laughs> yeah. I will see if I can post a link to the article below. So if anybody that hasn't hasn't seen it, um, by all means, go check it out. Um, before I forget, if anybody isn't already following Chris on Instagram, I'll put his Instagram on here somewhere. So he's popping at popping crowns. Um, <laughs> make sure you give Chris a follow. Um, so, wildcard pick. Anything else in the collection you want to talk about that I haven't given you a launch question to get into? Yeah. Um, An honourable so- mention, if you like. 
my honorable mention is very honorable. It's the, the last watch I received, and I feel like at this point people are going to think that uh, she's paying me to talk about this watch, but it's not true. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have uh, a friend, um, Bettina. She is a watch designer, watchmaker, or not watch maker. She's a, des- she's a designer that owns her own micro brand. Okay. Uh, uh, Moyles and Co. Uh, Moyles and Company. And, now I've got um, to tell you, I only know about this brand through seeing it from your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So she, uh, so this is the watch. Uh, it's the five two eight. It might not look the greatest on this camera. I'll put pictures. I'm going to put pictures but of everything yeah, on the anyway. Up, but it's it's just. Uh, it's cool. It's a, be- it's a beautiful, beautiful, and and let me tell you, well built. Uh, like we were talking about, fairer. Yeah. Um, the quality is here. And um, actually, it has the uh, same movement as the Cali Verde. There you so, go. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, we're talking about the, this watch community. You you wanting to get uh, closer to, to folks within this watch family. Uh, Bettina was the first person I met on on. I met that I actively spoke to. Yeah. Um, and it was just because she posted a Kickstarter for this watch. And I saw it, and I was like, I have never seen anything like that before in my life. Um, and I'm, I'm very into art. I've, I've worked with a lot of artists on comic books and things like that. Like, I love, I, I love art. And um, just the way she designed this dial, the, the asymmetry within the dial is so cool to it's me. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah, the, the is retro that their, TV, is, that their, is that their first watch? Is that their launch watch, or have they done ones this, before? This is her launch. This is so far. This is the only watch uh, that they have, but she has it in so many colors. Um, and she, we have been talking for well over a year. Like I, I commented on her Kickstarter post. Uh, eventually, we started just messaging each other privately, and we became friends, uh, talking about watches and talking about just regular friend, regular friendship. Um, yeah. But, yeah. but uh, you know, it, it's. I, again, the hard thing for these companies is how do you sell a watch that people can't get a hold of, um, especially when you're you're charging a decent amount for it, and a well deserved amount for it. It's well worth it. But I thought it would look strange on my wrist because the lug to lug yeah. vertically is short, um, and I have a, a big wrist. So I was like, you know, I I just I really love it. I love it design wise look wise i just don't know that it'll look good on me so i never i never purchased it so this is someone i'm friends with and never bought her do you know what it, it, it looks cool it's a cool story it might be i'd like to get her on i'd like to have a chat with her just to oh, just just to sure. talk about how how the setup of a new watch company goes the sales marketing manufacturing all that kind of stuff that really that really interests me i'd, I'd love to get i'd love to get the team learned, put, put a word in for me and see if we can get a, I have, get a chat i've learned a bit of that for her i've learned a bit of that from her but seriously um one thing i, I want to say is uh you know she she reached out to me said i have an extra watch in the states i can't think of a better person oh my word uh, to have it um she's like you've always been so nice to me do you want it and i was like yeah um <laughs> i want it no catch no she didn't yeah. ask me to do anything um and uh so yeah I, i'm just floored by the gift and i will say after having learned so much about the micro brand industry or just watches from her so many of these and i'm not putting down any watch company go so on it's good for the channel <laughs> So, yeah, so many of these, uh, so many of the micro brand watch companies or, or folks who are trying to make what they do is they have catalogs yeah. of different things, like different cases, cases hands, uh, and they different pick. hands, yeah, yeah, different new, and they just mix and match to create their perfect watch. And they're, they're well built, they're yeah. everything, but they're catalog picked. Whereas that none looks of, every single of, design, every single piece of it looks designed. Every piece of this Bespoke. was. Mi- bes- with the exception of the movement, that's yeah. obviously uh, a Salida off the shelf, uh, mo- uh, very good movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the exception of the movement, everything on this watch was designed and milled out 
for this watch. Yeah. Um, she invented the font for the, the numerals. She, um, the case design is, you know, to make the molds for these things, it's oh. so expensive. Unbelievable. It's so expensive. So that that's what drew me to, to this watch and to her is that she cares so much about the design that she wasn't willing to choose it from a catalog. Yeah. No, um, there's no, no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? No compromise anywhere. No, in any <laughs> no compromise. And that's the, that's when you know, like somebody really loves. Somebody cares. And you know yeah. what? And when, when you find out things like that, it kind of, again, makes you feel better mm-hmm. about making a sizable purchase of whatever it might be. If you know that the person <laughs> behind it has kind of gone, I want to put every little bit of effort and, and attention into every single detail in this. It doesn't, you know, yes, the cost is going to be, it's a business at the end of the day. She will probably, <laughs> if it's successful, she'll be making money. Yes. And right. we wish every watch brand was making money better for the industry, better for all of us. Um, but when things corners haven't been cut like that, I think it's, I think it's quite cool. Yeah. Same. Cool. Right. So before we wrap up, and if anybody is still watching after 48 minutes or whatever this is, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, just give me very quickly uh, what you got your eye on. What is the next purchase? What is, I know we're all trying to be good and not buy any watches, but what is next? Sure. Yeah. So um, quick answer is, I don't know. Um, But I think I have reached the point of my collecting journey where uh, uh, you make that decision, the, those moves that you first make where you buy a lot of affordable stuff and figure out what you like. And I am in the process of figuring out how to thin down the collection and go for some nicer, uh, you know, uh, not nicer, uh, uh, more on the luxury end model. So I've been looking at Grand Seiko, Ooh. uh, I've, oh yeah, man, that, uh, The finishing on the Grand Seiko is unbelievable. I've, that, I've, uh, the Amiwatari, I think it's called. Yeah. The, um, my is Japanese my, is not great, but yes, I know which one you mean. Yeah, that is my favorite, the one that looks like water. I tried that on in person. When you get that under the light, it looks like light hitting the crests of waves. It's so amazing. That's cool. Um, so that, I, if, if Rolex brings back a bigger Explorer 1, because... Mm-hmm. 7.8 wrist. Uh, 36 mil is not right for you. No. The 36 just doesn't look quite right on me. Um, if, if Rolex brings back a larger uh, a larger case for the Explorer 1, I'm, I'm going to be all over it. Okay. <laughs> all over it in the way that anyone could be all over. Yeah, you'll be all over the list waiting for it. I'll be, yeah. I'll be all over the list and uh, sending my AD chocolates and flashing the dimples at him. So, <laughs> I like it. I like it. But yeah, that's nice. what I got my eyes on. Right. Well, that's awesome, mate. I just want to say a massive thank you for giving up an hour of your time at such an early hour on a Saturday. Um, like I said, if even if this never actually makes it onto air, I have had a great hour. Um, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Chris. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, comment, make sure you definitely follow Chris on uh, Instagram. If you're in any of the watch groups on Facebook, you will see him on there as well. He is uh, a prolific poster um, and, and an all-round good guy. So thank you very much, mate. Stay in touch. Thank you. And uh, enjoy what's left of your Saturday. <laughs> all day. All right, pal. Catch you later. Thank you very much. Yeah.